We're almost there. What's going on, friends? Welcome back to another session. Let's talk about the comorbidities linked with increased disease severity. Now, I make this video because there's not a lot of empowering information coming from the media, coming from public health officials outside of wash your hands, wear a mask, socially distance, stay home, and if you must leave your house, do the latter tips that we mentioned. Okay, while that's helpful at slowing down or reducing transmission, there's this whole other side of the equation, which is improving your body's immune system and metabolic response. And we know that some of the common metabolic derangements, insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, are associated with chronic inflammation that is linked with increased disease severity, specifically accumulation of immunological cells, macrophages, monocytes, T lymphocytes, neutrophils, all these different cells infiltrate fat tissue, which creates this hyper inflammatory environment. So friends, look, the decision to go and have fried food, to go to have fast food, to have McDonald's, to have a soda, or to, to, to fast. Like if you're choosing between those two things, obviously fasting is much better at this point in time with everything that's going on with different hot spots popping up around the country. So I make these videos. I know they might be redundant. It's a topic we've been talking about since March. If we would not have closed down gyms, if we would have had people exercise, not told them to stay home, not told them they shouldn't play tennis outdoors, I feel like we might be in a better situation. All of my clients that I speak with right now, they're scared. They've put on weight from the stay home order. I don't know a single, I'd say like maybe 10% of people that I know, and I know a lot of very fit people, took this stay home order, the lockdown to the extreme and started exercising more and did all that. Most people started drinking more. Most people started eating more crap. Most people started watching more TV. Most people, their exercise and their activities went down. Okay, what do you think that did to their body composition? What do you think that did to their health? Well, Look, everyone is at a di different vulnerability for having increased disease severity. So the study that we're talking about today was recently published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. This is a very reputable journal, just in the same category as, say, the New England Journal of Medicine, the British Journal of Medicine, um, it, it, very reputable. And what they did is these, these scientists, they actually looked at outcomes, hospitalization, uh, requirements for ventilation, mechanical ventilation. Now, I'll get to a bigger image here that I'll show you, um, uh, which is right here. Okay, so if we look at this and we look at the hazard uh, ratios that are actually uh, right here. So when you go from being overweight to obese, there is a statistically significant increase in your risk of dying or requiring ventilation. So again, it's this, this message is not to vilify overweight people. This message is to not fat shame. This message is not to say, see, I told you so, you should have made better diet choices and you wouldn't be so vulnerable. This is to say, look, we also, in conjunction with all the strategies to reduce transmission, we also need to be focusing on improving the metabolic and immune state of the host. And arguably the best way to do that is through intermittent fasting, some sort of feeding window compression, optimizing circadian rhythm. So making sure that you're not staying up at two in the morning and having social jet lag. Sometimes you go to bed at nine, sometimes you go to bed at one in the morning, sometimes you get up at six, sometimes you get up at 10 a.m. Look, all that stuff, circadian malalignment and disalignment causes metabolic dysregulation. Now, let me just read to you some, some increased pathophysiologic studies or, or uh, kind of buzzwords that may help you better understand the connectedness between obesity, prediabetes and diabetes, and its connection with increased, vulner, increased risk of being more vulnerable and having poor outcomes when it comes to this disease. This is directly from the Annals of Internal Medicine article that we're talking about. Increased fat mass is associated with the accumulation of immune cells, predominantly pro-inflammatory adipose tissue macrophages. Friends, let me just pause. I'm not trying to promote my book, but I talked about this in the book, Belly Fat Effect, when I wrote it in 2013, over seven years ago. So if you want a, re a resource to learn more about meta-inflammation, that's available. It's on Kindle. It's on Amazon.com. I think I make a dollar or two off a book. I'm not promoting this to make money, but it's there if you want to learn more about this concept. Uh, the scientists go on to say, with increased expression of inflammatory molecules, including interleukin-6, elevated levels of interleukin-6 are uh, implicated in SARS-CoV-2-associated cytokine release. Uh, and, and the so-called uh, respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, uh, and, and the cytokine storm. Okay, so if you think about your body as having a bucket, an inflammatory bucket, or a glass, uh, whatever, a coffee cup, okay, if it's loaded with liquid and you just put a little bit more liquid in there, it's going to spill over. 
So the more body fat you have, the more subclinical and chronic in, in, you know, insinuating inflammation, all it's going to take is it, it won't take that much more increase of different cytokines to cause the cytokine storm, which le leads to multi-organ failure, which is the path, the, the immunopathology of this disease. So I think it's important that we understand that making the decision whether to exercise or not exercise, to skip the, the French fries and the bread and the, the fattening food, really the fattening food, friends, as I talk about in the book, Belly Fat Effect, is really fat and carbs blended together. That's really where we go wrong. Yes, carbs spike your blood sugar, but if they're not consumed with fats, probably not that big of a deal. So when you, when you consume ice cream is a good example. You have a lot of fat, sugar, boom, recipe for disaster. French fries, process, you have, you have fried carbs, okay? A chicken sandwich, right? You have fried stuff, so fat and high, high processed carbs. So uh, important things that, that we need to understand. Now, here's kind of the data that I think is really important, just the numbers. I know a lot of you focus on numbers. I like numbers as well. If you look here at the normal BMI, so this, and I know body mass index BMI, probably not the best in terms of a tool. I would be considered overweight, even though I have very low body fat. I'm hovering around 12.9% body fat, okay? So it's not, it's not perfect, but this is all the data that we have. And if you look here at normal weight versus obese and overweight, you see here there and then class three obesity, there's a 60 up to a 60% increase in, in dying for those individuals that are very overweight. So again, the media isn't talking about this. All we hear is wear a mask, socially distance, stay home. Wear a mask, socially distance, stay home, wash your hands. Okay, again, that's one side of the equation. That stuff might reduce transmission of an invisible little, uh, you know, point to, what is it, two nanometers small? This bug is so small, you need an electron microscope to see it, okay? So theoretically, you're reducing transmission by doing those things, but it, you're not 100% sure. Uh, what if the person cooking your food or delivering your Amazon or whatever gets something onto your box? And so staying home, avoiding everything at all costs, living in a bubble it's not really sustainable. And so I think it's really important that we double down on lifestyle intervention and strategies. Because friends, if you were overweight in March and you started working out now and started fasting, there's a high statistically significant chance that you would be normal weight at this present time. If nothing else, you would have improved your metabolic flexibility and reduced your levels of inflammation, okay? So we, we lost critical time. We lost critical time here, and I think we're still losing time because states like California are shutting down gyms. There was a gym in New Jersey where the individual refused to shut down because McDonald's was still open, Costco, Sam's Club, et cetera. He just got arrested. This is a crazy story. If anyone knows uh, the, the story, um, you can share that information. So uh, thanks for being here, friends. Um, I just, I think this, this stuff is bananas. Now, I know where you live, uh, if, if you live in North America right now, it's summertime. And during the summer, like I'm starting to sweat right now. I'm, I know you're probably sweating if you live in the Northeast or the South or the Southwest or even the Midwest. It's really hot right now. So we put together a new bundle over on our website, myoscience.com. This is one of the most potent electrolyte combinations and uh, wanted to offer it to you, friends, at $43, an amazing combination because not only do you support your electrolytes that you're losing from sweat, from exercise. If you go in the sauna, you're losing electrolytes. However, you're also getting here myo-inositol, which has a phenomenal dossier of research for how it supports whole body health, uh, even helps support uh, hormone health in ladies. Uh, but you're also getting taurine. Taurine is an amazing electrolyte that's found in high concentrations in the heart tissue, in the brain, and much more. So you can support your body's electrolyte balance and in enhance your sleep and modulate your body's stress response by going to, over to myoscience.com. We have a promotion going on that ends this Sunday. Again, that's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. So uh, here's what's kind of interesting is there's this new study that showed that, you know, people that have endocrine issues, hormonal issues, uh, whether it's diabetes, whether it's uh, individuals that have excessive adipose tissue, which would be characterized as an endocrine imbalance, uh, Hashimoto's, uh, other pituitary issues, they're at increased risk for increased disease severity. So this was kind of interesting um, to, to show that it's not, a lot of people think, well, 
I have asthma or I have lung issues, so therefore I'm at risk. It's not just relegated to upper respiratory uh, diseases and, and uh, pathophysiology. Uh, other endocrine issues have been shown to be uh, problematic. And so um, that's, this is an article that's free that you can find online, uh, uh, Obesity, the, the Achilles Heel uh, for COVID-19. And then this was another one. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, is this it right here? I think, um, well, this is a data set showing that obesity was linked with uh, increased outcomes and and uh, poor disease um, poor disease outcomes. So, uh, friends, I, you know we're going to double down on our message, and and the data clearly shows that not everyone is affected the same. That the worse off your metabolic health is, that the worse off your survivability will be with this disease. So, that's not to scare you. That's to empower you. That's to make make you. You know, make the appropriate healthy lifestyle choices so that um, you know you don't feel like a sitting duck. I, I think all the fear, the fear mongering, is is making us feel disempowered, like sitting ducks. So um, share this message with a friend. Share share the message that uh, now is the time to get healthy. Now is the time to double down on exercise. And we have a lot of tools for you over on our website, myoscience.com. Also on our e-courses, courses.highintensityhealth.com. So let's get to some questions uh, and. Take it from there. All right. What's going on, Nathan? Uh, Rajin says, hello. Um, someone says, I can't believe there's zero discussion on the relationship between obesity and COVID. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it seems like, I don't know why there's no discussion. Jim D, what's going on? Thanks for being here, Jim. Um, uh, someone says, no gyms in the 1950s, uh, no fat people. Well, uh, the food was, was a little bit different in the 1950s, as you may uh, remember. Uh, there's a lot of things that are different. There was no internet. Um, you know, people actually worked, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that work. I mean, what I mean by that is labor, like people did stuff with their hands. Uh, there wasn't so much automation. Um, so people actually did stuff. People moved. You, you actually had to leave your house to like get an income in the 1950s. Now you could stay home in your underwear, uh, and type in your keyboard all day and not leave your house, not leave your bedroom. You could literally stay in your bed all day do emails uh, and order everything you need to eat. You don't have to leave your house. So comparing the fact that there were no gyms in the 1950s compared to now and saying that exercise is not a requirement or prerequisite for optimal metabolic health, it's not you're comparing like apples to a tangerine. It's not a good comparison, but I appreciate the comment. Uh, someone says exercise means people would have to go outside. They don't want to do that. I know. Why go outside when you can stay home and order everything off uh, Uber Eats? Uh, someone says um, there would be uh, a treatment, but unfortunately the doctors who spoke are being censored. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so what else do we got? Double down, triple down, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. All right, friends. Well, uh, again, just wanted to hop on real quick and kind of share this data with you. Um, I know it's probably getting annoying. You're probably getting sick of hearing about it. But I'm grateful for your subscriptions. I'm thankful that you're hitting that like button. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting our sponsor, Myoscience. And uh, we'll catch you all soon. Have a good evening. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.